In this video, I'm going to be taking you through how to get the Sega Naomi Arcade platform all set up with RetroArch and LaunchBox. Now, if you're unfamiliar with my setup guides, essentially I do most of the hard work for you. And in the case of these arcade platforms, most of that hard work goes into pre-configuring these controls. And especially in the case of Sega Naomi, as their original arcade machines had some quite unique input types. So a bunch of testing goes into figuring out what button layouts are best for these games. And I don't just set whatever. For instance, if a fighting game has a modern console counterpart or port, I set it to the defaults for that modern counterpart. Everything else has been remapped to be as intuitive as possible. And I've even provided controller layout images for all of these games. So you need never be lost with buttons again. But this configuration doesn't just stop at controls. I've made sure that all hidden characters have been unlocked and there are approximately 20 games that have some form of unlockable content and that's all been done for you. Also, there are 14 games that needed their analog volume adjusted in their test menus. And you might be thinking, well, what is analog volume? Is that something to do with audio? And no, it's got absolutely nothing to do with audio whatsoever. The easiest way to explain this is to just give you an example. So the racing games, if left at default, when you press the left stick left halfway, it will actually register as a full lock in game. But if you adjust for this correctly within the game's test menu, a full lock left in game will be the same as pushing the left stick left all the way. So it will be one to one. And it's not just racing games that use analog input. The baseball games also use analog input for their bat swing. So a full bat swing is now a full pull on the right trigger rather than a half pull. And with Zombie Revenge, I actually found a analog input method, which works 10 times better than the joystick input, like a lot better. Now, these are just a few examples of what needed doing to get everything set up as perfectly as possible. And I will be providing a full list of exactly what I've done on a per game basis towards the end of the video. But for now, we're just going to get everything set up and ready to go. All of this information, along with the configuration files, I've put up over on the LaunchBox forums. And I'm going to put a link for this page in the description below. But we're just going to scroll past all of this for the moment. Because whilst we're on the subject of ROMs, here is a full list of every single working game in Flycast, along with which ROM it's using. And this is obviously for your reference. And don't forget, you're going to need CHD files for quite a lot of these games here. So don't forget to grab those. Now, as for ROMs location, where you should put those, that's really easy. So just go to LaunchBox, Games, and you're going to want to create a folder called Sega Naomi, which is what I've done here. There we go. There it is. Go into there and you want to put all of your CHDs and your ROM files in this location here. If you already haven't done so, you want to download the Flycast Core. So just start RetroArch up, go down to Online Updater, Core Downloader, and you want to find Sega Dreamcast slash Naomi Flycast. There it is. Download that. I've already got the latest version. Now from here, we actually want to start a game and this creates all of the file locations where we need to put all our pre-configured files. So I'm just gonna to go to Load Content, go to where I've put my Naomi games. No, not there, in LaunchBox, Games. And let's say Naomi, keep going, keep going. There we go, there it is. And we're gonna launch Alien Front specifically because it doesn't have a CHD. I'm just gonna to go to Load Archive and use Flycast to launch it. And we're just launching it until we can see gameplay footage. So wait until the intro screen has finished. And there we go, press start. And we can now press escape and that's all of our file locations created. So just bring yourself back to this LaunchBox forum page here, click download this file. And for the moment, we're just gonna download the Naomi Remap files for RetroArch and the NVMem files here. I'm gonna be covering the Lightgun games separately, so don't download these for the moment, just download these two. Now that we've got both of these downloaded, we can put them in the correct locations. Now we're gonna start with the NVMem files here. So just double click on the folder to open it up and you shouldn't need to unzip these because the files are so small. Now in the RetroArch file system, you want to go into the saves folder and depending on how you have your saves set to save, the RyCast folder that we need could be in one of two locations. And yes, I did save RyCast folder, it's just a remnant of the old days. So because I have my saves set 
to save on a content directory basis, my Rycast folder is going to be in a Sega Naomi folder. There we go, Rycast. Now, yours might be in a folder named Flycast or it could actually just be in this folder here, just all in one big folder. So just keep that in mind and make sure you find the correct Rycast folder. So let's say Naomi, Rycast. I'm gonna select all of these, pop them in there. Wait for that to transfer. And obviously I'm gonna replace those files there. Super, so that's all of the NVMem files transferred over. And these are the files that unlock all of the additional characters and change all of the analog volume adjustments. Now with the control remap files, again, just open the file up, no need to unzip it. And then with the RetroArch file system, go into the config folder and then go into remaps and then into flycast, select all of these, move them over. I'm just gonna replace all of those. And that's it, that's all of your controls pre-configured. With the mouse configuration files for RetroArch, which are for the light gun games, you want to make sure that you're downloading the correct ones. So if you only ever intend to play them with one player, just download and use the one player mouse config files. And this is because there are pros and cons to using the two player ones as it's using raw input. And sometimes it can get a little bit confused with its mouse indexes. So if you're only playing one player, just use the one player ones and only ever use the two player ones if you're actually gonna play two players. And again, once you've got that downloaded, just open up the folder, no need to unzip it. And with the RetroArch file system, go into the config folder, go into Flycast from there, select all of these, move them over, replace any files that are already there, and that's your light gun game setup. After we've got all of those files sorted out for RetroArch, we can now move on to LaunchBox and get everything imported. So start LaunchBox up, go up to Tools, Import, Run Files, click on Next. Now we don't want to add folder, we want to add files because we don't want to be adding any of these CHDs here. So just obviously find where your ROMs are located and I'm gonna scroll down to the first actual ROM file here. I'm gonna click on that one, scroll all the way down to the bottom one, hold Shift, click on the bottom one and it selects them all. And I'm just gonna press open, click next, find Sega Naomi on this list here. It's pre-populated for me, but it not, might not be for you. There we go. Click next. Now, obviously I don't want Demol for my emulator for this one. I want it to be RetroArch. And there we go. Now I want to set the core as Flycast. And this also sets our associated platform to this core for Naomi, which is nice. Then we're gonna press next. Use files in their current location. We're gonna search for metadata. I'm not gonna tell you which artwork to download because that's pure personal preference. So I'm just gonna select check none. I'm not gonna download any bezels. Now, with this section here, we want to make sure that we check import files from specified folders only, and we actually want to force using main metadata. Otherwise, LaunchBox isn't gonna find all the correct game titles for these ROMs. So select those two, press next, and then it's bringing us to the import wizard for main. Now, we actually want to import all clones, so select that and we want to check none here, and we do not want to create any playlists. So leave it all blank and make sure import all clones has been active. And there we go. And then we're gonna press next. And there we go. So if we didn't use the main importer, games like a Airline Pilots um, and a few other games will not be caught by the LaunchBox database. So make sure you're using the main import wizard for that one. I'm just gonna press finish. And there we go, that's imported and that's right there for me. So if I right click on this and press edit and go to parents, I can place that wherever I'd like and I can even place it in multiple locations, but I'm just gonna leave it where it is for the moment. So that's all of these imported. Now I'm gonna take you through my preferred core options for Flycast and also go over which graphics backends are available. So we're just gonna start any random game. As soon as the game starts up, you wanna press F1 to go to the quick menu and scroll down to core options. And we're gonna start with system. 
Now, I recommend not allowing Naomi service buttons because you don't want to be pressing these by accident when in game. And I've only set this to the first controller if you do have this active. So your mates can't accidentally get into the test menus and start changing a bunch of settings. I also recommend leaving these games to free play just because it makes it nice and easy. So let's move on to video. Now my internal resolution, I generally have 1440 by 1080 or 1280 by 960. However, with some of the 2D games, the higher the resolution you set, the more artifacts you're going to introduce. And aside from that, I have antistropic filtering set to 16, which is the maximum that you can set it to. And that's pretty much all I do with the video side of things. Now performance, I leave threaded rendering on and I leave these two off as my PC is just about capable enough to run these games. Emulation hacks, now widescreen cheat is really, really good. Now the widescreen hack is slightly different and it doesn't work as well as widescreen cheats. So just use widescreen cheats, but you can give this a go on some other games that don't have a cheat if you want to, just to see how you get on with it. And these two, I wouldn't worry about these at the moment. And input, so dead zone 10%. And we want to actually set our crosshairs here, which I've already done. So I always have my first player to red and my second to blue. And you won't need three and four because there's no three and four player games for the light gun side of things. There we go. And that's all of my recommended settings. Now with regards to the back ends, go up to drivers and let's go down to video. Now Flycast supports four backends, OpenGL, Vulkan, DirectX 11 and 9. So you can chop and change between these. You are going to be able to play most of these with GL Core, Vulkan or DirectX 11. But with Vulkan, you can introduce some artifacts into the 2D games no matter the resolution. So chop and change these. It's not going to hurt if you notice some artifacting or something that you don't like. See if something else works better. But for the most part, GL Core is going to do you just fine. And from here, that's it. It's all done. You can start playing some games. Now, don't forget over on that Launchbox forum page, you've got all of my controller layout images so you know exactly what the buttons are for every single one of these games. There we go. That's how to get Naomi set up with RetroArch and Launchbox. Now, I've done this entire process for quite a few other emulators as well, including the Model 2 emulator, the Supermodel emulator, and I've also done Samia Thomas Wave for RetroArch as well, with Sega Naomi 2 next on my hit list. So all of the arcade side of things for Flycast I would have covered. So if you want to keep up to date with that, slam me a subscribe and hit the bell. And if you liked today's video and I saved you some time, slam me a like. And apart from that, go play some games. Adios.